Welcome back, everybody. We're going to talk here about some of the drugs that are used in congestive heart failure. So I'm not going to go into pathophysiology too much here. I'm going to expect that you have some understanding of um, not only the pathophysiology um, of congestive heart failure, uh, but also uh, sort of the general way we go about treating uh, CHF both on an a acute emergent basis, on an inpatient basis, and then on an outpatient basis. So if you haven't watched my video on CHF, my more general video, please go back and do that uh, before watching this one. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or in the i button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated and definitely subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications each and every time I put a new video up. Okay, so this is really confusing, um, and uh, I apologize for that, but this is just the way it is. Um, so if you watched my CHF video, you should remember that the acute management, uh, for the most part, for congestive heart failure and decompensated CHF is LMNOP. Okay, loop diuretics, morphine, nitrates, oxygen, and upright positioning. Um, on an inpatient basis, we usually will then go ahead and add beta blockers and um, the SGLT2 inhibitors, but the beta blocker is the big one because we do not give beta blockers for acute management, okay? We wait until the patient is stabilized before we give beta blockers. On an outpatient basis, if the patient has preserved ejection fraction more than 40%, um, then we just stick with the SGLT2 inhibitors. Um, now, all of this being said, this is all predicated on the fact that they don't have anything else going on, and most of them do. Okay, so if they do have high blood pressure for whatever reason, we may have them on a beta blocker or an ACE inhibitor or something. Uh, but as far as management for congestive heart failure, um, this is it. Um, on an outpatient basis, then um, we start them on multiple other drugs, and we will go into those. Um, and that's, of course, if they're under 40%, it's different management. So the overall goal with CHF therapy is to reduce the pulmonary pressure. And that is done because... Um, Aside from sudden cardiac death, um, the biggest complication of congestive heart failure is pulmonary edema. So there are two ways to do this. We can reduce the preload, the amount of blood coming into the heart. Um, that's going to reduce strain, essentially, on the pulmonary circulation. And then also increase the blood going out, um, which um, you can either reduce the pressure that the heart is pumping against, or you could increase, essentially, the strength of the heart through positive inotropes, like uh, Dijon. Now, the inpatient management, like I said, it's LMNOP. And the outpatient management, I don't have a real good mnemonic for you, but we go with RAS inhibiting agents, so uh, something that inhibits the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Um, Secubitril valsartan is now preferred management, but we can also use ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers. We give them beta blockers. Um, that slows down the rhythm, allows for more filling of the heart. Um, and that allows for uh, better stroke volume. Aldosterone antagonists, and then these SGLT2 inhibitors, which is a fairly new uh, uh, component of management for congestive heart failure. Okay, so we'll start out with this new class of drugs called the angiotensin receptor neprilysin inhibitors, or ARNIs. These are actually two drugs combined. All right, now the, I believe that's still under trade, but the, uh, the drug is called Entresto. You may have seen it on commercials. And it's two drugs, Secubitril and Valsartan. So Secubitril is a neprilysin inhibitor. Neprilysin is an enzyme that breaks down natriuretic peptides like BNP. And BMP allows for vasodilation, natriuresis, and diuresis. So by blocking this uh, enzyme, we allow for BMP and these uh, natriuretic peptides that are naturally released um, in response to volume overload or congestive heart failure. So that's good. The other drug is Valsartan. That's an angiotensin receptor blocker. We will go into that. And you're probably familiar with how that works. Um, so like I said, this is now the preferred RAS inhibiting agent in the outpatient management of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, uh, which is basically synonymous with uh, systolic heart failure, uh, but not always. 
Um, it is not to be used in combination with an ACE inhibitor or another ARB or aliskirin, which is a renin inhibitor, so you don't add anything onto this as far as RAS drugs. The adverse effects are hypotension and hyperkalemia. ACE inhibitors, they are allosteric inhibitors of the angiotensin converting enzyme. Um, so by doing this, they block the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. And as you remember, angiotensin 2 stimulates the, uh, the release of aldosterone. So by doing this, you decrease both angiotensin 2 and aldosterone. Angiotensin 2 causes vasoconstriction, so we reduce vasoconstriction. We also reduce aldosterone release. Aldosterone causes volume retention, um, so we will reduce the fluid volume. So it's one drug, and we kind of come at it two ways. Example drugs are lisinopril and captopril. It is useful in congestive heart failure failure um, by promoting reduction in preload and afterload, but like I said, the AR and I's are now preferred. Um, the adverse effects here are cough due to um, interference with the bradykinin metabolism system, hyperkalemia, and hypotension. Angiotensin receptor blockers are primar primarily reserved for patients who are uh, intolerant of ACE inhibitors. Um, so this inhibits the action of angiotensin 2, and you get basically the same effect as ACE inhibitors. Um, adverse effects, hyperkalemia. This is sort of how the RAS inhibiting agents kind of come into play here. All right, spironolactone is a competitive inhibitor of aldosterone. So you're not reducing the aldosterone secretion, you're just blocking its effect. It therefore reduces sodium reabsorption in the nephron. Adverse effect here, again, is severe hyperkalemia. A big one is gynecomastia as well as sexual side effects, particularly in men. And so for that, uh, for that purpose, we uh, often will switch men to pl a plerinone, um, and that has fewer uh, anti-androgen side effects. Again here, hyperkalemia is an adverse effect. Loop diuretics. So loop diuretics are given to all congestive heart failure patients if they have signs and symptoms of pulmonary congestion, rails and wheezing and stuff like that. This inhibits the NKCC transporter uh, at the loop of Henle. It therefore reduces sodium reabsorption and thus reduces the fluid volume and reduces the preload and that will reduce pulmonary pressures. Drug here is furosemide, very commonly given. Adverse effect here is hypokalemia and uh, that's because it increases potassium uh, excretion in the kidneys, hyponatremia, gout, and ototoxicity. Nitrates and vasodilators are not usually given in most patients with CHF uh, unless they've had optimal medical therapy and they're still not responding. There's one exception though. Um, this does reduce afterload, um, which has a beneficial effect for reasons already mentioned. Nitroglycerin is usually given in an inpatient setting. Uh, isosorbide and hydralazine combined are typically given in the outpatient setting, similar to how we treat people with angina. Uh, now, uh, there is a demonstrated benefit in black CHF patients, so this may be a drug that you go to as part of primary management in those patients. Uh, adverse effects here are hypotension and tachycardia, which we need to be concerned about because it could worsen ischemia. Remember, a lot of patients with systolic congestive heart failure have a history of MI. Beta blockers uh, inhibit the action of catecholamines at beta receptors. Uh, mostly here we're going after the beta-1 receptors. So this reduces the heart rate, allows more time for systolic filling, and thus increases the stroke volume to some extent. Uh, it also causes vasodilation, which reduces the afterload. Drugs here would be uh, medications like metoprolol and carvedilol. Um, this is not given as part of the acute management. So I mentioned that already. Very important for you to understand. We do not give beta blockers as part of the acute management for CHF um, like we would for, for instance, instance, uh, an MI. Adverse effects here are hypotension, hyperkalemia, fatigue, and weakness. You should use metoprolol in patients with asthma or COPD because it's beta-1 selective. Remember the beta-2 receptors in the lungs. We do not want to, uh, we, we don't want to cause uh, a vasoconstriction of the bronchi.
SGLT2 inhibitors are, uh, they're kind of new, but they're fairly new as far as management of congestive heart failure. So usually when we think of SGLT2 inhibitors, we're thinking of diabetes. Um, this causes you to pee out glucose, but it also causes you to pee out sodium. And so it does have a mild diuretic effect. Um, so the exact mechanisms as to why this is so good for congestive heart failure patients, why we recommend it for pretty much everybody, regardless of ejection fraction, it's not really well understood, but it is very cardioprotective. Um, so all patients with CHF, with or without diabetes, regardless of left ventricular ejection fraction. And some example drugs here are dipaglifosin and empaglifosin. Positive inotropes, you should be familiar with these. The big one is digoxin. Um, so this has an interesting mechanism. I'll show you on the next slide. This is really only used for systolic congestive heart failure because the goal here is to increase uh, cardiac output. That is not a problem in diastolic congestive heart failure. You should know that. So the way that this works is it blocks the sodium potassium pump in the cardiac myocytes. Um, so by blocking that, you increase the concentration of, I should say, increase the concentration of sodium by uh, blocking its efflux out of the cell. And so when you increase the concentration of sodium, you're gonna slow this one down, this sodium calcium exchanger. You have higher concentration inside the cell, you're not gonna pull as much sodium into the cell. And as a consequence, you're not gonna kick as much calcium out. So the ultimate effect is that it increases calcium concentration in the myocytes and thus increases the strength and the contractility, ultimately increasing ejection fraction. Digoxin toxicity syndrome is occasionally tested, it is rare. It's triggered by hypokalemia. Now, what do you know about all those drugs? We talked about ACE inhibitors, ARBs, um, the ARNIs. What do they all have in common? They all cause hyperkalemia. So it's very rare to run into a patient with congestive heart failure who's hypokalemic. Of course, it can happen, but um, that's why this is rare. Um, now, the reason that hypokalemia is a big problem is because potassium and digoxin compete for the same spot on this pump. And so if you have less potassium, digoxin is gonna be potentiated and you will have adverse effects. Hypersalivation, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, loss of appetite, um, pretty nonspecific. Visual disturbances, these patients will see halos. That is more specific. Um, the severe adverse effects are cardiac arrhythmias, supraventricular tachycardias, ventricular tachycardias, which can, of course, degenerate into VFib and then AV block. So it can cause a lot of different arrhythmias. The treatment here is antibodies against digoxin um, will help you clear it. Um, so digoxin immune FAB. Um, and you also, of course, need to treat the dysregulation arrhythmias accordingly. So out of all these drugs, what does not decrease mortality? Diuretics do not help with mortality. Positive inotropes uh, like digoxin do not improve mortality. Nitrates and vasodilators in most people do not. However, in black patients, it does seem to increase survival. And then the supportive care doesn't really help either. Uh, but it does help uh, in the acute management. Now, what does decrease mortality long-term? This gets tested on your exam, so you should know any of the uh, RAS inhibitors, so ARNIs, ACE inhibitors, uh, ARBs, they all increase survival. Beta blockers, spironolactone, and like I said, in black patients, nitrates and vasodilators.